Hello and welcome back to Mrs. Orloff's Art Studio. Today I'm going to be reading out of this silly, silly book. Um, these stories are a kind of nonsense. So um, the word nonsense means that it's spoken or written words that have no meaning or make no sense. Or they're, it's foolish or unacceptable behavior. Nonsense. Um, and it kind of fits either way. Another way of an, the adjective version of the noun nonsense is nonsensical. So having no meaning, making no sense, or ridiculous, impractical, or ill-advised. So that would be the adjective version, and nonsense would be the noun version. So, the stinky cheese man and other fairly stupid tales. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we are going to kind of start from the beginning. Now, I hope you know what a, a normal book looks like. We have the front cover, and then let's see here. I have found a kernel of wheat, said the little red hen. Now who will help me plant this wheat? Where is that lazy dog? Where is that lazy cat? Where is that lazy mouse? Wait a minute, hold everything. You can't tell your story right here. This is the end paper. The book hasn't even started yet. Who are you? Will you help me plant the wheat? I'm Jack, I'm the narrator. And no, I can't help you plant the wheat. I'm a very busy guy trying to put a book together. Now, why don't you just disappear for a few pages? I'll call when I need you. But who will tell my story? Who will help me draw a picture of the wheat? Who will help me spell the wheat? Listen, hen, forget the wheat. Here comes the title page. Okay, title page for the Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales. It's by Scholastics, Inc. Okay, so we are going to read through this. It may take a second. I know, I know, the page is upside down. I meant to do that. Whoever looks at that dedication stuff anyhow, if you really want to read it, you can always stand on your head. This book is dedicated to our close personal friend, special friend, <laughs> your name here, J.S. and L.S. Okay. A long time ago, people used to tell magical stories of wonder and enchantment. Those stories were called fairy tales. Those stories are not in this book. The stories in this book are almost fairy tales, but not quite. The stories in this book are fairly stupid tales. I mean, what else would you call a story like Goldilocks and the Three Elephants? This girl walking through the woods smells peanut porridge cooking. She decides to break into the elephant's house, eat the porridge, sit in the chairs, and sleep in the beds. But when she gets in the house, she can't climb up on the baby elephant's chair because it's too big. She can't climb up on mama elephant's chair because it's much too big. And she can't climb up on papa elephant's chair because it's much, much too big. She... so she goes home. The end. And if you don't think that's fairly stupid, you should read Little Red Running Shorts, or maybe The Stinky Cheese Man. In fact, you should definitely go read the stories now, because the rest of this introduction just kind of goes on and on and doesn't really say anything. I stuck it in to the end here so it would fill up the page and make it look like I really knew what I was talking about. So stop now. I mean it. Quit reading. Turn the page. If you read the last sentence, it won't tell you anything. Jack, Up the Hill, Fairy Tale Forest, 1992. <laughs> Surgeon General's Warning. It has been determined that these tales are fairly stupid and probably dangerous to your health. That was the introduction. Oh, let's look at the artwork real quick, though. Who do you think that's supposed to be? Pretty sure that's Jack. 
I don't know who that's supposed to be, except for this person. Or that character. Oh, and look at this way up the hill. I think that's Jill. Okay. And this is some crazy bird. Let's make this a little lighter. I really do like his artwork. It's kind of glary, so I apologize and hard to see. There we go. But we need to be able to see the words, so we're gonna turn that down. Chicken Lincoln. Once upon a time, Chicken Lincoln was standing around when a piece of something fell on her head. Boop! She wasn't the brightest thing on two legs, so she started running around in circles clucking. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! We must tell the president! Chicken Lincoln ran to her friend Ducky Lucky and clucked. Ducky Lucky! Ducky Lucky! The sky is falling! The sky is falling! We must tell the president! Let's go, quacked Ducky Lucky. Chicken Lickin' and Ducky Lucky ran to their friend, Goosey Lucy, and yelled, Goosey Lucy, Goosey Lucy, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, we must tell the president. Let's go, honked Goosey Lucy. Chicken Lickin', Ducky Lucky, and Goosey Lucky, Lucy ran to their friend, Cocky Lucky, and yelled, Cocky Lucky, Cocky Lucky, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, we must tell the president. Let's go, crowed Cocky Lucky. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! cried Jack the narrator. I forgot the table of contents. I forgot the table of contents. Hey, you're not in this story, said Chicken Lincoln. I know, said Jack the narrator. But I came to warn you. The table of contents is... The sky is falling! The sky is falling! clucked Chicken Lincoln. We must tell the president. So Chicken Lincoln, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Lucky ignored Jack the narrator and ran off to catch the plane to Washington. Just outside the airport, they met Foxy Loxy. Foxy Loxy, Foxy Loxy, the sky is falling. The sky is falling, we must tell the president. Yelled Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Lucky. Well, come with me, said Foxy Lucky. I know a shortcut to the airport. Foxy Loxy led Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Lucky to his cave. He didn't get to eat them, though, because Chicken Lickin was almost right. The sky wasn't falling. The table of contents was. It fell and squashed everybody. The end. Chicken licking. Table of contents. Four. The princess and the bowling ball. The really ugly ducking. The other frog prince. Little red running shorts. Jack Bean's problem. Cinder rumple skin. The tortoise and the hare, the stinky cheese man, the boy who cried cow patty. Okay, I think that's all we're going to read today, but as you can tell, this is a book of nonsense. It doesn't really completely make sense. It kind of follows something that we already know, but look at the artwork as well. I love how the table of contents fell and squashed everybody. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. So have fun making a nonsensical art scene with your project this week. Just in case you can't get into Google Classroom, your three requirements is to create a wacky bird or monster art scene using the capital letters A, R, and T. Include additional wacky birds or monster buddies from the last two pages of the wacky bird PDF. Use any of the background scenes or PDFs as inspiration. Um, these will be in your Google Classroom um, and I will add them to the materials. So they'll be in the assignment and I'll put them in a materials as well. Use dark lines around the characters and use dark areas such as the inside of their mouths and eyes to create contrast. You may use color but is not required. Contrast is the difference between light and dark. So black, here's big contrast, black against white. That's the highest contrast you can get and that's why we use black letters 
on white backgrounds most of the time because it makes it really easy to read. Um, the third requirement is to create the illusion of space by using the techniques shown in the Wacky Bird PDF on the third page. So take a look at that. Um, email me if you have any questions or have any problems opening up the PDF. Thanks, guys. We'll read from this book more later. Have a great week.